Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about why you need acoustic ceiling treatment. We spend a lot of time focusing on the side walls, the front and the rear walls, but the ceiling is kind of uh, the, the stepchild, if you will. It doesn't get that much of attention, but if we think through it, it's very, very important to what we hear. Obviously, we have reflections off the ceiling from our monitors that, that strike or from our speakers that strike the ceiling. So that's actually the ceiling and the floor are the closest surfaces in most rooms to us. So I know we talk a lot about sidewall reflections because they control a lot of areas within our soundstage and between our speakers, but technically the floor and the ceiling are the reflections that arrive at our listening or monitoring positions first. So we, we need to, to address the ceiling and we have a couple areas uh, that we can look at there. Pressure, obviously we have a lot of pressure in our rooms and the ceiling is a good spot to uh, put low frequency absorption when you have uh, pressure areas that you have to deal with. Professional recording studios do this all time, uh, a lot of times for a couple of reasons. One is that the ceiling is a, an area that's not utilized that much. People aren't up there walking around at least. So you have an area that doesn't take up any uh, usable space, uh, so to speak, within the studio or the room. So it's a good place to put uh, low frequency absorption. Obviously, middle and high fre frequency reflection management need to be addressed also. Usage, very critical what way to go here. Uh, what are our options for ceiling treatment? Um, we have diffusion and absorption. Those are really our two choices. We can have low frequency absorption and we can have middle and high frequency absorption. We can have low frequency absorption and we can have middle and high frequency diffusion. All of these variables depend on room usage. What is our usage? If it's a home theater room, we can go a couple different ways. Diffusion and absorption is a popular way. Once again, it depends on room size depends on how much energy is in the room, how big the seating area is, lots of variables to consider. But as a general rule in home theater, we use both absorption and diffusion. <clears throat> in a listening room, it can be both absorption and diffusion, or it can just be absorption. It de depends how critical the listening environment needs to, be, to become, how the listener or the end user is, is uh, treating his listening experience. A lot of people like a real tight, focused central image. So, so absorption in a case like that would be, would be more uh, applicable to the customer. Secondly, a lot of people like a more diffused, open uh, presentation. So they want the reflection managed, not necessarily uh, focused that, that uh, distinctly and tightly between the speakers. So it's really up to the usage of the room and the person, obviously in a control room, we want to hear everything in the mix. So most of the time in a control room, absorption is the way to go. And that's uh, what we use, especially on the front end, side walls and front wall. The rear wall usually is almost always diffusion. So usage is very, very critical. This is missed a lot uh, with people. They think one size fits all and one, one room will do everything, it won't. That's why in a professional recording studio, you have voice, live, control. You have all the separate rooms uh, because uh, the professionals realize that one room won't do everything. The ceiling, how much does it contribute to what we, we're hearing? 15 to 20 percent. If you treat your ceiling, you'll notice about a 15 to a 20 percent difference uh, in, in your sound presentation. Well, whether, no matter what the, the room usage is, home theater, listening, or control room. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.